Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you, our respected viewers, and welcome to a new episode of the Beliefs of Islam. In today's episode, we will talk about the miracle of the Holy Quran. Now, in the previous episode, we had cited but one example of an authentic non Quranic miracle to demonstrate that the Holy Prophet, uh, peace be upon him and upon his pure family, had indeed produced extra miracles which were external to the Quran. In today's episode, however, we wish to introduce the viewer to understand what exactly the miracle of the Quran entails. Now, many Muslims claim that the Quran is a miracle and yet many of them depend upon unique features of the Quran without ever expounding upon a full concise examination of the individual facets of the Quranic miracle. Now, by doing so, sadly, much Muslims fail to articulate what a miracle is and fail to excite or inform either non-Muslim friends and indeed lay and uneducated Muslim friends as to why we believe that the Quran is a valid explanation example. By doing so, sadly, much Muslims fail to articulate what a miracle is and fail to excite or inform their non-Muslim friends and indeed lay and uneducated Muslim friends as to why we believe that the Quran is a valid example of the main miracle of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Now we must first then examine why miracles play such an important role in affirming the truth of a religion and how much miracles can indeed be viewed as an indicators which validate a religion in comparison to other claims. Now the first type of claim used to validate a religion is often personal experience known as a religious experience. If we imagine two people, each following a particular faith and experiencing the same event, such as a great light appearing in the room, the experience would equally affirm their beliefs. This cannot be the case, as both religious beliefs cannot be true. This would be an obvious contradiction, hence violating the law of non-contradiction and contradicting reasoning itself. Now, fundamentally, we make these interpretations based on the philosophy and belief system we already hold to be true, namely worldviews, Therefore, what we learn from the experience is dependent on what we already believe. It's therefore useless to appeal to personal experience before we have settled the philosophical question. However, one may still assert some virtue in a personal experience. There is no reason for a prior contradiction in suggesting that God the Almighty might occasionally intervene to provide direction or guidance. Nevertheless, we must understand philosophical limitations and attempts to justify religious beliefs through personal experience. This basically means that the miracle must transcend what we would refer to as a personal experience and be something which is ultimately objective and not merely subjected to the believer. In the next few episodes, we will be exploring with a greater clarity the need for an objective criteria by which to judge a miracle claim beyond the limitations of personal experience. This is for today. Until we meet with the new episodes, thank you very much indeed for being with us and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.